Bangor. From the Great Northwoods to the Rockbound Post and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, state police are trying to reunite stolen property with the owners following a bust in northern Maine. Plus, those extra SNAP benefits are coming to an end now that the pandemic is over. And some local students were given the opportunity to experience art in an unlikely place. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for tuning in on this Friday morning. I think the weather is going to be the big story on and off throughout the day today. Yep. Uh, we've got some icy weather moving into the area. Some people are already seeing it. We're going to see a mixed bag of you know freezing rain rain, drizzle. Some areas will see several inches of snow, maybe a couple of inches around here. Then everything's going to freeze solid later on. Lots of schools have um, called off classes for the day because yeah. they're expecting things to get worse as the go day goes along. And some other businesses may also be closing early. So you may want to check ahead if you do have to head out today. Right, right around the time that schools would get out. It seems yeah. like it's going to be an absolute mess It'll right at that time. Ice covered. Yep, so. yep. Here's Devin Biggs with a forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Friday. Your first weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Alrighty, here we are. Active weather moving in. We have winter storm warnings. I was kind of wondering they would upgrade some of us to a winter storm warning in the northern ends of the state, and they have. And this is up until about 10 p.m. for accumulating snow and some ice as well. Winter weather advisories also posted until 10 p.m. for these areas here. Also for ice, that will be moving in and a little bit of snow along the coast. We also have small craft advisories and gale warnings posted until Saturday morning at about 7 a.m. or so for winds that will be moving in. For now, we're quiet, and that's not going to stay that way. We're going to be watching for that winter mix that will be filling in. As the morning progresses on, so we're in that quiet stretch now with snow in the northern ends of the state. But we're watching the precipitation starting to fill in from the southwest to the north and east. So as the morning progresses on, we'll be watching this all beginning to fill in. So by about 9 to 10 o'clock, this will all get going and switch over to snow during the afternoon period. By early evening, we'll start to see this taper off and the sky clearing out overnight tonight with a lot of sunshine to start things off for your Saturday. So your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. So a lot of this gets going by about 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning with temperatures in the 30s. So the precipitation will become frozen by the afternoon period as temperatures fall. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. If you were the victim of a burglary or theft in the St. John Valley in the last year, some or authorities may have some good news. Since the spring of 2020, multiple law enforcement agencies have been investigating reports of burglaries and thefts. They say suspects were developed and they have recovered a large amount of stolen property. If you were a victim, whether reported or not, police ask that you go to the Fort Kent Police Department at 416 West Street between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. on February 20th. That's this upcoming Monday. Law enforcement will be there to speak with you and will help you identify your property. A convicted child molester will spend more than 20 years in prison after being found guilty of sexually assaulting a child under the age of 12. 40-year-old Corey Farley of St. Albans was arrested in August of 2021 and charged with gross sexual assault and unlawful sexual contact. Officials say the assaults took place over several months in 2020. During a court hearing earlier this week, Farley was ordered to serve 23 years in prison. According to the Morning Sentinel, he'll also be on lifetime supervision and must register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. The Hancock County Sheriff's Office is investigating a snowmobile crash that left one person seriously injured. Lieutenant Tim Cody says 23-year-old Isaiah Reynolds was driving a snowmobile on the Bayview Road in Penobscot just after 7 Wednesday night when it went off the road off the right side of the road. Cody says the snowmobile went into a ditch, rolled over, and ejected Reynolds. He sustained life-threatening injuries. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. Another lawsuit filed against Maine's Catholic Diocese accuses a priest of sexual abuse decades ago. The complaint says Reverend Angelo Lavasser, who was a priest in Frenchville, took a boy in his early teens to a religious event in Quebec back in the 1990s. Attorneys say Lavasser and the boy shared a hotel room where he gave the teen alcohol and encouraged him to disrobe. The alleged victim says Lavasser forced him into sexual contact, which left the boy shocked and confused. 
Looks like that sought is no longer working. We'll continue the story. The diocese has not responded to requests for comment. Attorneys say Levisura was assigned all over Maine during the, his time with the diocese from southern, central, and northern parts of the state. He died in 2009. This is the 14th lawsuit filed against the diocese recently after Maine overturned the statute of limitations on claims of sexual abuse, a law the diocese challenged and lost in court. Well, in other news, environmentalists and local advocates are celebrating a Maine Supreme Court decision that has major implications for a proposed fish farm in Belfast. The Maine Supreme Court ruled Nordic Aqua Farms does not rightfully own the land where the company had plans to build the large land-based salmon farm. In 2018, Nordic Aqua Farms announced plans to develop the salmon aquaculture facility in Belfast. The company made an agreement with landowners to bury industrial pipes in the intertidal land located between their properties property and Penobscot Bay. However, neighbors who were against the farm claimed that they owned part of the land where construction was planned. Thursday's ruling gave ownership rights to the neighbors opposing the fish farm, making the path ahead unclear for Nordic Aqua Farms. The Maine legislature has voted overwhelmingly to send a bipartisan supplemental budget plan to the governor's desk for her signature. The vote was 113 to 21 in the House, 24 to 5 in the Senate. According to a statement, the proposal ensures the state will meet all of its financial obligations and pay bills throughout the end of the fiscal year. A supplemental budget is an adjustment to the 2021-2023 uh, biennial budget to ensure Maine abides by its constitutionally mandated balanced budget law. Senate President Troy Jackson said, quote, now the Appropriations Committee can really dig into the biennial budget to craft a two-year proposal that makes key investments for working families, small businesses, and rural communities. There's a demand for health care jobs and more than enough people willing to take them. The only problem, not enough professors to train them. That's according to Senator Susan Collins, who says more than 90,000 applications for nursing programs were turned away nationwide in 2021, mostly because of faculty shortages. In the Senate Health Committee yesterday, the president of UNE testified that the university is finding creative ways to bridge that gap, including having existing nurses train students on site. We're actually using the faculty on site, using nurses on site. We provide professional development and support from the university to have them train people on, on site in the main health hospitals. Senator Collins says UMaine had more than 1,000 applications this year for only 80 slots in its nursing program. She says she's working with others on the Senate Health Committee to look for solutions to the health care workforce shortage. Boy, I hadn't heard that side of it before. I know they're having problems getting enough people to do health care, but... I hadn't heard yeah. it either. That's very interesting. Yeah. Need more teachers out there. Yep. Well, the time now is 8.08. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, some local students were given the opportunity to experience art in an unlikely place. But first, another check of that weather forecast. Looks like a messy day ahead, folks. A wintry mix can be expected. We'll see drizzly rain, all that kind of stuff. The high is right around 34 degrees. Tonight, that evening snow will eventually come to an end with a low around 8. Tomorrow, a partly cloudy day. Not bad at all, but highs near 30. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years, offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Before and bath fitter. Before and bath fitter. If you have a before bath, Now's the time to call Bathfitter to get a beautiful after. With our unique tub over tub process, there's no mess or stress. Spend smart on a beautiful new bath done right, backed by a lifetime warranty. Join over 2 million happy customers who know it just fits. Bathfitter. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on Half Off Dining, and start saving now. Come visit Candor Cafe inside the Bangor Mall, where your fresh and healthy meals are made for you by a certified nutritionist. We also offer plant-based and gluten-free options. Stop by and see us today. Candor Cafe inside the Bangor Mall. 
Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. When it comes to the feud, name a way a woman might say she likes her men and her cheese. You either nail it. Sharp. Spicy. Or fail it. Full of adventure. When you're at the grocery store, you want to find some adventurous cheese <laughs> running around the dairy section. Family Feud. Where are you going? Stop all this adventure. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Herman's DP Porter Contractors has been chosen to complete renovations and improvements at Dexter Regional Airport. Dexter Town Manager Trampus King says the new terminal building will cost roughly $1 million. Other planned improvements include paving and renovating the airport's driveways and parking areas. And this comes after the Dexter Town Council agreed to acquire the nearby Dexter Auto Club in order to use that space as part of its new terminal building. King says this investment will not only benefit the town, but also nearby towns. So they can go to surrounding areas, you know, they could get to Greenville and get to Bangor if they need to, and um, without dealing with the traffic at those airports. A Dexter Regional Airport was awarded $760,000 in federal funding this past summer to replace its current aviation terminal building. King says he expects construction to begin in May and wrap up by November. Some local students were given the opportunity to experience art in an unlikely place. St. Joseph Healthcare welcomed students from Husson University to their 900 Broadway campus to view the Robert Shetterly Art Exhibit. The exhibit is part of St. Joseph's Healing Arts Program, which brings art into spaces for patients. I think it's important for them to realize that art impacts our daily lives, uh, whether it's through advertising or media or looking at things in galleries that might inspire us or inspire us to, to go out and, and be the change we want to be in the world. It's, it's endless, really, but it's, that's part of the human experience, just to, to get out there and see what's there. The exhibit is available to the public through the end of March. All right, well, the time now is 8.12. Coming up after the break, a group of local middle schoolers hit the ice yesterday, many learning how to fish for the first time. We'll check out that more as Good Morning Maine continues. Your first car, your first edition, and your first edition. We're here to help with all of life's firsts. Brewer Federal Credit Union. BrewerFCU.org. When a governor wanted to increase sales in his state, I suggested a sales tax holiday. When the Treasury wanted to stimulate the economy, I suggested they try 0% interest. His dreams, maybe. Dorsey's beautiful home furnishings are all on sale right now. Plus, you'll find items in every department with Dorsey's red clearance tags. So with 24 months 0% financing or an additional 5% off, this is a great time to buy quality home furnishings and mattresses from Dorsey's. Live beautifully and save, my friend. If you're eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, a Medicare Advantage plan from Anthem Maine Health can come with all the benefits you want and zero compromises. Just go to AnthemMainHealth.com slash answers or call 855-753-3928 for a one-on-one -on -one Medicare plan review. Ask about our $0 monthly premium plans that include dental, vision, and hearing coverage, along with transportation, a free gym membership, and $0 copay for prescriptions, all for zero extra cost. Plus, you could be eligible for extra benefits to help you save even more. We have plans with up to $2,500 a year to help you pay for over-the-counter health items, groceries, and living expenses like cell phone, electric, or water bills, all on a single prepaid MasterCard you can use at thousands of locations nationwide. Call Anthem Maine Health at 855-753-3928 or visit anthemmainhealth.com slash answers and get a Medicare Advantage plan with zero compromises for you and your wallet. You've lived quite a life. Now it's time to live it up. We're here to help you enjoy all you've earned. Brewer Federal Credit Union. BrewerFCU.org. Welcome back, everyone. Well, around 100 Milford Middle Schoolers got to take part in a main tradition, and for many, it was a new experience. David Ludford reeled in the story. First catch of the day. Yeah. Good job! 
Thursday morning, Milford Middle Schoolers from Dr. Lewis S. Libby School hit the frozen waters on Pickerel Pond to learn about ice fishing with Maine's Youth Fish and Game Association. Principal David Wilcox says the day is just as much about making memories as it is about education. You have kids in high school now that used to talk about this, and so it's just been good to bring this tradition back and really see kids utilize the resources we have. It's rooted in our in our system, and it should be in our school system, showing these kids how to use the land and really use our resources, and something like this has just been great to see. Kids were taught to set their own traps, use live bait, and recognize the types of fish they caught. While they waited for the flags on their traps to fly up, signaling a fresh catch, many took breaks to sled across the ice. However, one young ice fisherman stood by his line, hoping for a fish to take a bite just to set it free. I'm feeling great about this trip, but the, um, the previous one got away, so not good, and I'm still waiting. It takes a lot of time. Organizers of the day say it was once a storied tradition in Milford, but had to be canceled the last few years due to COVID precautions. Getting ready for their first year back took nearly two months of planning. Now, teachers and parents say they want to hold the event every year moving forward. We've had a few uh, great catches today, and kids have been really supportive and um, congratulating each other and, you know, hoping that everyone's going to be able to catch something. It's a great experience for the kids. A lot of them have never been ice fishing before, so this is just a great day. It's beautiful out here. In Milford, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Boy, it was a great day to get out there. It felt a little bit like spring yesterday. Yeah. You know, the temperatures were up in the 50s and everything was melting out there. You saw yeah. that one kid running around with just a T-shirt. Right. You know, they won't be doing that today, though. Right. I'm yeah. glad that the ice was still thick enough, thick enough for them to get out there. But, yeah. man, oh, man, I wish I th wish more schools were able to do that. Yeah. That's very good. And take me with you. Yes. I'd like to ice good fish, point. too. Yeah. I will chaperone. Yeah. Today will be a messy day. It won't be like yesterday. Um, we'll expect kind of a just a me messy, messy mix. I don't even think those kids are in school today. I lot, know. Lot Hopefully not. Well, yeah. here's Stephen Biggs with the forecast. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. All right, winter storm warnings. Winter weather advisories posted, both expiring at about 10 p.m. this evening. I was, I'm not surprised to see some of this upgraded to winter storm warnings. I was expecting it, honestly, because of the snow accumulation forecasts that were expected there. And, of course, winter weather advisories here for a lot of this also for some ice concerns that will also be taking place. So I'll have to keep an eye on this as well. And active weather along the coast, we have small craft advisories and also gale warnings posted. And both of these will last until about 7 a.m. as we head towards just Saturday as well. Wave heights are active for now at around 2 to 4 feet, according to some of the buoys. You know, some spots up to 5 feet, so we might see this getting just a little bit more on the active side as the system begins to move in. The radar and satellite is quiet for now. We probably have had some precipitation already this morning, definitely in the northern ends of the state, which has started out as snow, and that will be continuing for a decent amount of time yet. So as we zoom things out, here is all the precipitation right here, tracking for the southwest to the north and east by about 9, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll be watching us moving in, starting out maybe as rain for most of us, but temperatures will fall, so maybe some freezing rain and sleep possible before we transition to all snow as the afternoon progresses. And this is all courtesy of this area, low pressure right here that's tracking for the southwest, going toward the north and east, so we'll push this through and we'll calm things down tonight with high pressure to the north. That will clear the sky out later on tonight once the system clears. So future cast, we got snow going already. By about 9 to 10 o'clock, the frozen precipitation gets going. We'll see it switch over to snow during the afternoon period or so. By about 6, 7 o'clock, it starts to back off from northwest to southeast. And once we get to the end of the evening time frame, we'll start seeing the clouds breaking up overnight. So by Saturday morning, starting off with plenty of sunshine, so everything should recover after the frozen precipitation that we're seeing. Maybe a few passing clouds by Saturday evening. Then as we head towards early Sunday morning, maybe a few breaks in the clouds as well. So things will calm down just in time for the weekend. So here we are. So decent snowfall on the way, maybe up to 10 inches near the Caribou area before we're all finished up. Further down to the south, maybe one, two, maybe up to three inches in a few spots before we're all finished up as we start to transition to some snow. 
As for some ice concerns, uh, maybe a tenth to two tenths of an inch of ice before we're all finished up. So be ready for this. Roads will be slippery. Maybe some power outages in a few spots as a result. The ice will definitely be careful out there today. So a forecast for today, 34 degrees. That wintry mix switching over to snow with that north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. By tonight, 8 degrees, partly cloudy, some snow showers early. The north wind gusting up to around 30 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, 30 degrees, a lot calmer, partly cloudy. The west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended, extended forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Mostly cloudy on Sunday, highs in the lower 40s, upper 40s on Monday with a chance for rain, and partly cloudy Tuesday, highs in the upper 30s. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay. It's a wintry mix out there, but pockets of orange are standing out against the white blanket of snow throughout the state. Next Home Experience is listing and selling homes just like yours. Get looped and get sold with Next Home Experience. Family owned and operating in the Bangor area for more than 10 years, Crosby's Welding is here to help you. We specialize in steel, stainless steel, and aluminum welding and fabrication. We serve many of the local industries from Maine lobstermen to the commercial trucking industry and everything in between. Fully mobile on-site construction services right down to custom signs and fire pits. Fast, friendly, reliable service. Give us a call today for a free estimate. 974-7815. It's the Toyota Washington's Birthday Sales Event at your all-wheel drive headquarters, giving you, for a short time only, cash-saving deals. Right now, you could get a cash-saving 3.99% financing deal on an all-wheel drive RAV4. And every RAV4 comes with two years no-cost maintenance and Toyota Safety Sense. Hurry for the Toyota Washington's Birthday Sales Event for cash-saving deals only at your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Pictionary. With her shoes. Ballet, tutu. Tutu, correct. You did it. With one second left. Weekdays at 10 on Fox 22. I woke up with this overwhelming feeling to pick up a paintbrush and start painting. And so that's what I did. And this is what came out. We'll hear more about the Florida Highwaymen artists and the main painter working to keep their legacy alive. Monday on Fox 22 News at 10. Looking for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. Now to the toxic train disaster in Ohio. Many residents are demanding independent testing of the water and soil as the weather threatens to complicate efforts to contain the pollution. The EPA, meanwhile, says the air and water is safe. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, people in East Palestine, Ohio, bracing for a new threat stemming from the toxic crash site where a Norfolk Southern train carrying vinyl chloride derailed two weeks ago. Fearing heavy rain could spread contamination, officials built up dams along the crash site. All families need to know that they are safe. The slow-moving chemical plume from a controlled burn at the site is expected to drift into West Virginia today. But the EPA says the contaminants are well below the 560 parts per billion that the CDC considers hazardous. The state of Ohio and EPA are working hand-in-hand. Hand, and if we say that the water is safe and the air is safe, uh, we believe it because we've tested it and the data shows it. But residents say they're skeptical and scared by mixed messages on water and air safety in the last two weeks. Some reporting sore throats, vomiting, and other symptoms. That train derailment happened just back there. And you look here, this is one of those gas monitors. And on the screen, it's zeros across the board. But you talk to residents in this neighborhood, and they'll tell you that if you spend an extended amount of time here, you're going to feel something. You don't bring families back with their kids and their loved ones and then... Tell him to scrub with Dawn. Ohio's governor now calling for additional resources from the federal government. HHS and CDC crews now deploying. Meanwhile, in Michigan yesterday, another Norfolk Southern train derailment. The company saying no one was hurt and no chemicals were spilled. The number of toxic train derailments nationwide has been declining in recent years. 
Rail carriers have been involved in more than 13,000 hazardous material incidents since 2002. Norfolk Southern involved in 1,530 of those incidents, more than 100 of them classified as serious, including a 2005 derailment in South Carolina that released toxic chlorine gas. Nine people were killed. Well, meanwhile, back in Maine, during the pandemic, low-income individuals and families in Maine were getting extra money to buy food each month on their EBT cards. But now that pandemic boost in SNAP benefits is ending. Brad Rogers has more. With the extra pandemic benefits, Danette Killinger got $516 a month on her EBT card to buy food for her and her disabled adult son. She says next month it drops to just 26 bucks. $26. That's a big drop. There it is. My son's disabled and he, you know, eats a lot. <laughs> He's a grown man. And we both live on 914 a month. Congress authorized the additional SNAP payments on a temporary basis to help low-income people and families deal with the hardships of the COVID-19 pandemic. But now Tina Coughlin and her disabled son, along with her elderly mother, will all lose hundreds of dollars in benefits. Hers is going to drop to $120. For a whole month? For a whole month. We're going to struggle, and I think that a lot of the pantries are going to get overrun because people aren't going to be able to buy what they normally buy. Local food pantries are already bracing for the impact. It's going to be rough on a lot of families. We're seeing uh, a, a huge impact even with the increase of the cost of uh, groceries. Every Thursday, the South Portland Food Cupboard helps stock the shelves in the homes of dozens of families in need. Well, people are walking away from here with 25 to 30 grocery bags full of groceries, including fresh produce. Yeah, you like what? Like? They're also open Tuesdays for people to get some groceries. Director Dwayne Hopkins says he can only imagine what the demand will be next month. But this is going to be an extra added impact, one that I think is going to be unprecedented. And it's going to call for, or call for a greater demand, a higher demand of food and volunteers. Because of the emergency funding, Killinger managed to avoid the food bank. Now she has no choice. I haven't been there in years, but we'll find out. Is this the time to be taking benefits away? No, no, absolutely not. It's definitely the worst possible time. It's just going to get more difficult, too, with inflation and everything. The, yeah. the cost of living is going up. I don't know how some of these people are, are getting by. Right, you know? right. Yeah, food pantries need volunteers and donations more than ever. Yeah, something to keep in mind. Right. When we return, we'll have your community calendar packed full of local events going on this weekend. We'll be back right after this. Find meaningful work and direct care and improve the quality of life of others. The right personality and character traits, in my opinion, to be a DSP is kind, caring, and understanding. Visit mainjobs.care slash WFVX to learn more and make an impact through a compassionate career. NextGuard is the flea and tick protection that's number one with vets. Your vet trusts it for her patients and her own dog. Plus, its delicious beef flavor is number one with dogs. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Ask your vet about NextGuard. It's the biggest sporting event in Eastern Maine. A tradition like no other. We followed your high school teams all season long. And no station will have better basketball coverage. Fox 22, your home for the Maine High School Basketball Tournament. Find meaningful work in behavioral health care. I find that the most rewarding part of my job is the emotional gratification in seeing my clients succeed. Visit mainejobs.care slash fox to learn more and make an impact through a compassionate career. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Friday, February 17th, 2023. Today is also Random Act of Kindness Day. It all began in 1995 when a Colorado nonprofit organization came up with the idea. It's meant to inspire people to perform small acts of kindness to brighten someone's day. They don't have to be significant acts and they don't have to accomplish much, just something to maybe brighten somebody's day, put yeah. a smile on their face. Yeah, and I think the thing about doing that is it, mm -hmm. it does well for you as well. Sure if does. you're in your own yeah. head, if you're stuck in a rut, if you're not doing well, I think the best thing to get out of your head is mm -hmm. go do something for somebody else. Right, buy right. somebody coffee, something right. you know, sim simple like that. You Help know? somebody paint. 
I need some help. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, I've offered to help, but you know. <laughs> I know. Um, and I've yeah. got all the tools if you need them. Yes, but, thank you. You know, little things like you, you see these little stories of people, you know, shoveling their, their sidewalk. Why not do your neighbors too, right. the, you know, elderly neighbor or something like that? Right. Yep. And you we'll can find something if you keep your eyes open. Yeah. Well, on this day in history, in 1863, the International Red Cross was founded in Geneva. In 1817, a street in Baltimore became the first to be lighted with gas with, from America's first gas company. And in 1990, East Germany announced it would tear down a 600-foot section of the Berlin Wall. Uh, it's kind of crazy to think about how... For a long time, we were li literally living in the dark. Mm -hmm. I take for granted just having street lights. Yeah, that it's was so the important. nation's first street light. And yeah. It wasn't that long ago, if right. you think about it. So, right. Yeah, we're coming a long way. Well, today's birthdays include pop star Ed Sheeran, who is 32. I think that kid is just so... Uh, 32, he's not a kid, but to me. But he he's has that energy. so talented. He's a youthful though. energy. He's yeah. great. Yeah. Basketball great Michael Jordan. Speaking of talent, he's 60. Social light and performer Paris Hilton is 42. And comedian Daniel Whitney is 59. He is perhaps best known as Larry the Cable Guy. He's made a whole career out of it. Or Mater on Cars. Oh, Mater. Yeah. Yes. See, I never saw Cars. That was like, a, That's you one know. of my favorite Disney movies. It? It's yeah. great. Yep. Yep. He's funny. All right. That. As far as the weather forecast goes, as we've been saying, it's going to be a messy day ahead. Um, we could check out the live cam from Greenville. Uh, earlier, it was snowing pretty steadily there, about 3.50 in the morning. Right now, it doesn't seem like it's doing too much. Nope. Um, some parts of the state are receiving snow at this hour. Others are going to be expecting freezing rain and drizzle. And it's supposed to coat everything later on. And, you know, what happens with that? You can have power outages. Right, right. Hopefully, it won't be that bad. According but. to Devin's forecast, which we've already seen a couple times today, um, it seems like it will be bad right around the time that kids would be getting out of school. Right. And that's so. why a lot of them are not right. having class today. Right. Hey, but here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Friday. Your first weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. Alrighty, here we are. Active weather moving in. We have winter storm warnings. I was kind of wondering they would upgrade some of us to a winter storm warning in the northern ends of the state, and they have. And this is up until about 10 p.m. for accumulating snow and some ice as well. Winter weather advisories also posted until 10 p.m. for these areas here. Also for ice, that will be moving in and a little bit of snow along the coast. We also have small craft advisories and gale warnings posted until Saturday morning at about 7 a.m. or so for winds that will be moving in. For now, we're quiet, and that's not going to stay that way. We're going to be watching for that winter mix that will be filling in as the morning progresses on. So we're in that quiet stretch now with snow in the northern ends of the state. We're watching the precipitation starting to fill in from the southwest to the north and east. So as the morning progresses on, we'll be watching this all beginning to fill in. So by about 9 to 10 o'clock, this will all get going and switch over to snow during the afternoon period. By early evening, we'll start to see this taper off and the sky clearing out overnight tonight with a lot of sunshine to start things off for your Saturday. So your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. So a lot of this gets going by about 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning with temperatures in the 30s. So the precipitation will become frozen by the afternoon period as temperatures fall. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Well, we've got Chocolate Festival going on in Greenville. Yeah. Skowhegan has all kinds of things going on this yeah, weekend. Yeah, Somerset Snow Fest. Yeah, lots going on. Absolutely. Let's take a look at that community calendar to see what else is going on.
Lots going on. All sorts of stuff. Yeah. All right, still to come to here this morning, Tyler Cruz will have your sports updates. And we'll hear about that chocolate fest. I know, I'm going, excited. It's going to be tasty. Yeah. There are some things that go better together. Hey. Like your workplace benefits and retirement savings. With Voya, considering all your financial choices together can help you be better prepared for unexpected events for a brighter financial future. Thanks. Ah, pretzel and mustard. Another great combo. Voya. Voya. Well planned, well invested, well protected. If you've been injured in a serious accident, the insurance company is not your friend. Don't accept their low ball offer. Make the call to a fighter, a serious law firm with the knowledge and experience to know what your case may really be worth. Go after every dollar you are entitled to. Tell the insurance company you mean business. Call Joe, the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Maine lawyers working for Maine people. It's one fantastic ride. The turbocharged, tech-inspired Kia Forte. Best two out of three. Get 2.9% APR for up to 48 months on a new 2023 Forte during the President's Day sales event. Max True Value Hardware in Unity is the best option year-round for all of your home improvement projects. Backed by one of the leading paint manufacturers in the United States, Max will color match or custom mix any color for you. We care about your pets too, carrying all of the essential pet products in our store. During those cold winters, we take the extra step to help with wood pellets ready to load on site. We also fill all size propane cylinders year-round. Max True Value Hardware, we take pride in serving our community. Let us know how we can help you today. Scootner puts the Intercontinental title on the line against Bad Cat Moss. Plus, Ronda Rousey returns to the ring. An all-new Friday Night SmackDown. Live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, tonight on Fox. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. It is tournament time, and yesterday we showed all of the finalized girls' brackets while well, the boys wrapped up their preliminary action. And now all of those boys' brackets are official, and the tournament is ready for tip. Let's roll them. Starting with Class A, Bangor is at Oxford Hills. In that 1-8 matchup, Lewiston hosts Edward Little. Portland hosts Wyndham. And then on Friday, Hamden and Cheveris go at it in that 4-5 matchup. And these will continue with the semifinals next Thursday, the Cross Insurance Arena in Portland. For Class A North, those quarterfinals are at Augusta. They play Saturday in the evening session. Skowhegan and Lawrence kick us off followed by Nokomis and Mesolonsky. Mount Blue and Coney have the third game, and then Brewer Boys and Camden Hills finish us off Saturday night. Let's go to Class B now. Orno and Caribou kick us off at three, kick us off there at the Cross Center on Friday night, followed by Winslow and Presque Isle. And then they continue on Saturday with Old Town and Foxcroft at the 4-5, and on B and Ellsworth taking on Washington Academy to wrap up those quarters. Class C boys get going on Monday. Dexter is the three, and Lee is the six. That's at 7 p.m., followed by Fort Kent and George Stevens at 8.30. All of those quarters wrap up on Tuesday, starting with Woodland and Fort Fairfield, and then Callis and Penobscot Valley, that 1-8 matchup. In Class D now, they get underway on Saturday night with Skank and Katahdin, followed by Machias and Wisdom. And then that resumes Monday at noon with Bangor Christian and Easton, followed by Southern Aroostook, the defending champs, and Jonesport Beals. And as always, you can find all of these brackets up to date online at foxbangor.com slash brackets. Let's move on now back to the girls' sides of things. Up in Howland, the Penobscot Valley Howlers are gearing up for the Class C North Tournament as the number two seed. The Howlers are 17-1, and, and they are one of the top teams in a stacked Class C North field. Their signature is defense, and that is, what, uh, that is what's most to thank for their record right now. Their opponents are scoring just 24 points a game, and Penobscot is outscoring those opponents by 34 on average. And head coach Nate Case says the key to their success on the floor is how hard they work and how tough it is to game plan for them. 
it's just a lot of work to play that defense. And we've almost ramped it up this year a bit more that we, we press a lot more than last year. I don't think anyone can replicate uh, the length to try to practice for our defense. And, and so that's a big advantage. Yeah, it's really hard to scout that length. The Howlers are looking to win their first gold ball in school history. And when they have to compete against teams like Dexter, the top team, Central, Hodgden, Matanawcook Academy, they know they have to bring their A game on all sides. We just have to keep working hard and practice. I mean, that's where we're going to get better, just practicing, being intense, communicating, and staying together and being positive as a team. So we're just going to keep putting in the hard work every day in practice. I know it sucks. Like, it really does suck sometimes, but that's what's going to pay off. Hard work is what gets you there. We'll have more on the Howlers as we highlight them in our Hardwood Spotlight on Friday. All right, let's head to some action. Double A quarterfinals have really been going on all week. And on Thursday night, Bangor hosted Deering with a trip to the semis on the line. The Rams of Bangor, the number two team in the north, Rams of Deering, trying to pull off the upset. Second half, we start with Bangor up. Emmy Streams is going to get it here from Abby Quinn. She's got room, so she stops, pops, and buries the long range, too. And then here she is again. It streams too quick on the first step. She finishes with the left and one. Daring would fight, though. Maya Gale drives. She kicks to Shea Rosenthal. She gets in the lane for two for the bucket there. And then it's this tandem again. It's Rosenthal driving, kicking to find Gale. And she's going to finish that one for two. But Bangor was all over the place. Here's Cassidy Ireland to Abby Quinn. She finishes through the foul. That is tough right there. The Rams allow just eight points in the second half. Here's all three of their captains on what worked and what's next. Uh, we really prioritize like switching on defense and switching quickly and communicating the switches on defense. So I think that's really what changed. I think defensively we're at our best and when we turn it up a notch, I think we change the game a lot. Well, we got nothing to lose. We're just going to give 100% effort and yeah, come on with it. All right, good luck to them there in the semis. On to some golf news now. It's almost that time, and the field continues to grow at the first annual Drive for Kids charity golf tournament. This coming June, some of sports and entertainment's biggest stars will be teeing it up at Falmouth Country Club and all for a great cause. The star-studded field will now include former Red Sox great Derek Lowe, who was here in Portland on Thursday. Lowe, a member of that magical 2004 Sox team that ended the title drought, reversed the curse. He's been an avid golfer for many years. More celebrities will be added throughout the spring. Proceeds will benefit the Barbara Bush Children's Hospital. And earlier, Derek said he's excited about getting the chance to reunite with some of his former teammates, including Tim Wakefield and the very personable Kevin Millar. He talks as much on the golf course as he does in the studio and, and off the course. But, and that's also one of the beautiful things for us, too, is to be able to see some of our old friends again. Um, camaraderie's great. And, and again, it's just it's something that I give everyone so much credit for um, you know, putting on this event. And we look forward to coming back in June. One of the heroes of that Game 7 ALCS game, Johnny Tame and the other. Let's stay on the hardwood now, and we'll stay in Boston. The Celtics are officially removing the interim tag from Joe Missoula, and they'll elevate him to the team's official head coach. In a press release on Thursday, the Celtics named Missoula the 19th head coach in franchise history and agreed upon a contract extension, although the terms of which have not been disclosed. So Missoula officially replaces Ime Udoka as the team's head coach. The Celtics right now have the best record in the NBA heading into the All-Star break at 42 and 17. Missoula was named coach of Team Giannis at this year's All-Star game, only the third first-year head coach to lead an All-Star team. He now becomes the league's youngest head coach. And I got to personally know Joe's late father, Dan, during one of my internships working in the rec center he built. I watched his younger brother, Justin, play in high school and college. It's happy for the whole Missoula family here, a great group of people. That's all the time we have for sports, though. Be right back after the break. Why should your new floor come from Carpet One? Because we're passionate about the spaces our neighbors call home. We're part of your community, and we're also part of the world's largest cooperative of independently owned and operated flooring stores. So you can be sure you'll get great selection and outstanding value with every installation. Whether it's carpet, hardwood, tile, or luxury vinyl, our experts take the guesswork out of choosing the right floor. We're your local Carpet One Floor and Home, the one store for your perfect floor. 
If you're eligible for Medicare and Medicaid, a Medicare Advantage plan from Anthem Maine Health can come with all the benefits you want and zero compromises. Just go to anthemmainehealth.com slash answers or call 855-753-3928 for a one-on-one -on -one Medicare plan review. Ask about our $0 monthly premium plans that include dental, vision, and hearing coverage, along with transportation, a free gym membership, and $0 copay for prescriptions, all for zero extra cost. Plus, you could be eligible for extra benefits to help you save even more. We have plans with up to $2,500 a year to help you pay for over-the-counter health items, groceries, and living expenses like cell phone, electric, or water bills, all on a single prepaid MasterCard you can use at thousands of locations nationwide. Call Anthem Main Health at 855-753-3928 or visit anthemmainhealth.com slash answers and get a Medicare Advantage plan with zero compromises for you and your wallet. Opposite water? Sand. 25 words or less. Go home with another $10,000. Thank you, Carson. You're welcome. What's 10% of 10,000? <laughs> Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. We're here with Allison Arbo. She is the dire executive director of Destination Moosehead Lake. Allison, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me this morning. Yeah, and you're here to talk about a very cool festival happening this Sunday, the, the Chocolate Festival yes. Annual. Yes. And it's the 19th year, correct? It is, yes. It's the 19th year. Um, so we're doing some new things this year. Cool. Uh, we're also very excited to be back after two years of having to do a COVID style drive through, you know, contactless um, chocolate festival. Right. We're really happy to be back and having this event in our community again. Yeah. So some changes we've heard. We were talking earlier, yeah. some live music will be yes. part of it, correct? Yeah. What kind of music? Um, so we, it's the um, Hunt and Allison Smith. Um, they do um, fiddle, and accordion, some like kind of folk music. Awesome. It'll be it'll be fun. They kind of do a variety of things. Um, so it'll be nice. And they're gonna play for a little while, take a break, come back and play closer to the end um, of the festival. And this is all taking place at the consolidated school, you said? Yes, people yep. can walk in and pick their chew. What, in Greenville. What are, what are yep. people going to see there? Right. Yeah, so um, what we do it at the Greenville Consolidated School. Mm -hmm. Um, and they, it's really nice because it's a way that you can come in and exit through different doors. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. So you can really come in. It's like a U shape, kind of a horseshoe Full of circuit. the building. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Um, so they'll come in. What they'll first see is the, um, after they pay at the door for the tickets, mm -hmm. um, you come through, there's going to be silent auction. We have free popcorn as that people can pick up. So you have, have salty and sweet going salty on. Salty and sweet. <laughs> nice. Get your palate ready for that chocolate. Yeah. Um, and then you, um, and so there's a traditional silent auction. We also have a raffle silent auction. So you cool. can buy tickets um, for some various items. They're, you know, 100 and under uh, kind of prices. Chocolate related items or no, anything? No, they're everything. Cool. We have, I mean, the, it's amazing what the community of the Moosehead Lake region they give for these kinds of auctions and um, community events. Uh, so we have everything from, you know, board games to, um, you know, our, when our local winery, they gave a basket with a bottle of wine and nice. a couple glasses of uh, wine glasses and things that you would need to open your bottle of wine. I love those a kind of things. auction. It's yeah. full of surprises. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then um, the more traditional sign auction has some bigger priced items. So a couple places, um, Appalachian Mountain Club gave a one night stay. We have wow. another one of our resort areas that gave a stay with their um, indoor pool uh, wow. privileges. Yeah. Uh, there's also rafting over in the Forks, whitewater wow. rafting. So there's some really cool things. Uh, yeah. We also got some signed memorabilia from both Boston Red Sox and wow. um, the Boston Bruins. Uh, so we have a picture signed and we have a puck that's signed by yeah. players on the team right So now. it's really something for everybody. It if is. there's a couple and somebody's yeah. really like, I need to go get my chocolate fix, somebody yes. else has something for them as yes. well. Yes, and with, it's, we're lucky because this weekend, it's the second um, weekend of the annual Moosehead Togue Ice Fishing Derby. Yep. Mm -hmm. Plus it's free fishing weekend. It's right. Great, so, great weather for it yeah, too. Yeah, it's so. going to be great. So yeah. there's, you know, while the guys might be out on the lake, um, kids and the moms and families can come and um, be there or, you know, whoever. Uh, right. 
that they want to take a break, come get your chocolate. Yeah. Right. Um, tell us a little bit where the, where the chocolate's coming from and, and what's the purpose of this event? Yeah, so the, um, the chocolates come from um, both donated from local residents around the Moosehead Lake region and our businesses. Cool. Um, a lot of the restaurants and inns, um, they really get into it. They're doing some one, uh, the Blair Hill Inn's making some like bourbon chocolate covered. Yeah. Um, caramel treats <laughs> um and some of them get really i i don't even know some some people are still getting back to us on what they're making so there's gonna be some really um interesting concoctions coming um and then there there are around 40 different people are involved wow. and they're each making you know 60 to 100 pieces of chocolate wow. so we'll have around 4,000 pieces Variety. of chocolate that's going to be available. This will all help boost the area. It will, yeah. and what we use this um, for is a fundraiser for Destination yeah. Moosehead Lake, um, gotcha. and it's to help with our operations um, and our marketing. So yeah. making sure our visitor center is open. We are open for all four seasons. Um, we stay open, um, and we also market that region. So, And it's not just you know drawing attention to get people to come, but it's also marketing to tell people about how they come to vacation yeah. in that region because it's very vast. It's rural, very much an outdoor recreation space. Right. So there's a lot of information that needs to be given out. It's a destination folks. for so many reasons. It is. Well, and we're all out of time. Chocolate's yep. a good way to do it. We appreciate you coming yeah, thank down you, today. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Again, it's taking place Sunday in Greenville. So yes, head on over. at the Consolidated School. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. We'll throw it over to Devin Biggs for our full weather forecast. All right, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. They work throughout the state of Maine, serving both buyers and sellers with a focus on the greater Bangor area. All right, winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories posted, both expiring at about 10 p.m. this evening. I was, I'm not surprised to see some of this upgraded to winter storm warnings. I was expecting it, honestly, because of the snow accumulation forecast that were expected there. And, of course, winter weather advisories here for a lot of this also for some ice concerns that will also be taking place. So I'll have to keep an eye on this as well. And active weather along the coast, we have small craft advisories and also gale warnings posted. And both of these will last until about 7 a.m. as we head towards your Saturday as well. Wave heights are active for now at around 2 to 4 feet, according to some of the buoys. You know, some spots up to 5 feet, so we might see this getting just a little bit more on the active side as the system begins to move in. The radar and satellite is quiet for now. We probably have had some precipitation already this morning, definitely in the northern ends of the state, which has started out as snow, and that will be continuing for a decent amount of time yet. So as we zoom things out, here is all the precipitation right here, tracking for the southwest to the north and east by about 9, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. We'll be watching this moving in, starting out maybe as rain for most of us, but temperatures will fall, so maybe some freezing rain and sleep possible before we transition to all snow as the afternoon progresses. And this is all courtesy of this area, low pressure right here that's tracking from the southwest, going toward the north and east, so we'll push this through and we'll calm things down tonight with high pressure to the north. That will clear the sky out later on tonight once the system clears. So future cast, we got snow going already. By about 9 to 10 o'clock, the frozen precipitation gets going. We'll see it switch over to snow during the afternoon period or so. By about 6, 7 o'clock, it starts to back off from northwest to southeast. And once we get to the, into the evening time frame, we'll start seeing the clouds breaking up overnight. So by Saturday morning, starting off with plenty of sunshine, so everything should recover after the frozen precipitation that we're seeing. Maybe a few passing clouds by Saturday evening. Then as we head towards early Sunday morning, maybe a few breaks in the clouds as well. So things will calm down just in time for the weekend. So here we are. So decent snowfall in the way, maybe up to 10 inches near the Caribou area before we're all finished up. Further down to the south, maybe one, two, maybe up to three inches in a few spots before we're all finished up as we start to transition to some snow. As for some ice concerns, uh, maybe a tenth to two tenths of an inch of ice before we're all finished up. So be ready for this. Roads will be slippery. Maybe some power outages in a few spots as a result of the ice. So definitely be careful out there today. So a forecast for today, 34 degrees. That wintry mix switching over to snow with that north wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. By tonight, 8 degrees, partly cloudy, some snow showers early. The north wind gusting up to around 30 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, 30 degrees, a lot calmer, partly cloudy. The west wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended, extended forecast sponsored by the More True team of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Mostly cloudy on Sunday, highs in the lower 40s, upper 40s on Monday with a chance for rain, and partly cloudy Tuesday, highs in the upper 30s.
When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond's Home Planning Center will turn your ideas into accurate conceptual drawings and 3D visualization is available. Your Hammond sales rep will prepare a materials list and cost estimate. And when you buy all of your materials from them, Hammond will refund all of your design fees. Hammond can deliver your order from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. It's your journey. Own every mile in the all-electric Hyundai Ioniq 5, 2023 Motor Trend SUV of the Year. Now lease a 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 5 for $569 a month. See your Bangor Hyundai dealer. Bath fitter is a better way to remodel your tub. Precise measuring means the perfect fit. The bath fitter tub over tub process means no mess or stress. A custom made tub and seamless wall mean a watertight fit. Premium acrylic means it lasts a lifetime. And all this together means a great value. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. Well, the IRS says so far this year about 19 million people have already filed their taxes. The agency says the average refund is around $1,963. The IRS data as of February 3rd shows roughly 2.3 million more people have filed their taxes in 2023 compared to last year. In a report, a financial analyst says more people may be filing earlier this year in hopes of getting a refund check sooner. I am not one of those. I have my appointment made at least. There you go. So it's yeah. coming up. You have, I think, until April something. Yeah. April 15th. Plenty of time. Hey, let's check in with the Greenville Junction live cam. It looks like a train's going by right now. That's a cool shot. Oh, that is kind of Very neat. cool. All sorts yeah. of lumber, all sorts of main exports. Very cool. We've been watching that all day because that part of the state is is supposed to get some um, some messy weather before the rest right. of us. Right. Looks not... hazy, like it's, it's coming on. Yep. Yep. Northern Maine, I think they're supposed to be picking up a few inches of snow up there. We'll get just a couple around here before it's all done. Right. A lot of places closed today, so right. you may want to call ahead before you go. And by the way, the um, Penquist Business Office is one of those that's closed. They just sent yep. us a message yep. to let people know. So call yep. ahead before all you go sorts out. Of places. Things are going to get a little icy later. All right. For our last story for the day, the Backwoods Veterans Foundation is putting on its fourth annual snowmobile ride Friday and Saturday, today and tomorrow, up at Pittston Farm in Rockwood. The foundation was started by Sean Mills, who has a vision to give back to some friends that were veterans. Some of them were dealing with medical issues like PTSD, and he wanted to give them a weekend away where they could enjoy a nice snowmobile ride and the greatness that Maine brings this time of year. If I have any avenue at all to give back, this is, this is the way I can do it. and I'm happy I'm able to at least give them two days of an experience out of their normal day and, and take them into the woods and show them some sort of appreciation. You know, I... I've been doing this for four years, and I see the smile on their face when they get here, and I see the bigger smile when they leave. The ride has grown thanks to great participation from the community and more than 40 sponsors. They also have a silent auction and fireworks going on as part of the weekend. So far, they've donated seven snowmobiles with full sets of gear and complete.